So year 11s, we need to look now at how microorganisms and humans form their relationships. Now we're not looking at infection here, we're looking at industrial applications for microorganisms. So how do humans actually use these microorganisms in industry? How might they also use them in nature as well? So it's our relationship now between microorganisms and humans. We're going to spend quite a bit of time in the lectures actually looking at the natural relationships and you're then going to go on and look at some industrial relationships yourselves. We are going to explain and go through that in these slides. So with our first slide that we've got, or second slide that we've got here, we're looking at microorganisms. We're talking about different shapes and different sizes. Now really what we're talking about here with those differences are the different groups that they sit into. So you can see on the screen behind me here, on the um, slide behind me here, we've got our bacteria, we have our protists and our fungi. Now, the bacteria are our prokaryotes. So those are those simple cell organisms, those single cell unicellular organisms. They don't have a nucleus, they don't have a, a, any membrane bound organelles. They are quite simple. They have a range of different shapes, range of different sizes. Our fungi are like our yeasts that we use to make bread and beer and our protists are our algae and um, seaweed. These are organisms that are becoming more and more important in our industrial uses and we'll talk in a moment about how important they have become. But because there's so much variety in our uses of bacteria, whether it's natural or industrial, we need to consider what they actually need to survive. So if we go to our next slide here, we can see that these microorganisms, they have their own requirements. So there are some requirements for nutrition. Now nutrition doesn't, it doesn't in this case mean a requirement for energy. It's talking about that material requirement that we had earlier in the slideshow. So it's the need for so, um, certain sorts of ions, certain uh, removal of wastes as well. So that comes under this nutrient level of waste requirement. We also have our temperature requirements. So a bacteria, for example, that is a detritivore that's going to break down organic material and that's going to recycle that is probably going to need quite a cool environment because it's going to be found predominantly in soil out in the elements. Whereas a yeast that's going to be converting sugar into carbon dioxide to help make bread rise, that's going to need quite a warm environment. So temperature is important to control as well. We also need to consider pH. pH affects how permeable the membrane is, so the higher or low, lower the pH is within a certain range, the more difficult it is for the cell to survive. With our oxygen concentration, certain organisms, particularly microorganisms, because they aren't able to control their external environment as effectively as a large multicellular organism is, they're very affected by that pH range and by their um, oxygen concentration, by their amount of water that's, that's available in their external environment because they struggle to control that. Or they don't have an internal environment to monitor. And then lastly, we have that energy requirement where we've actually got this relationship between a need for energy and the production and, and the requirements for growth and all of those sorts of things that the cell needs to do each day. So whenever we're using these for an industrial purpose, we're going to need to look at how can we control each of these. When we're looking at these in nature, we need to think about how are our behaviours changing these? How are our behaviours affecting these requirements and what impact is that having on the microorganisms that we have? Over the next few slides, we're going to be looking at these biogeochemical cycles, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle and the phosphorus cycle. And we're going to see some examples of how human behaviours can alter those.